is a bearding man known for the hair upon his face. Two mighty sideburns flank his chin in grand fibrous embrace. They curl most nobly round with not one hair strayed out of place. A stranger fame than some, perhaps, but Bill wears it with grace. I retired 23 years ago from the Army. Since then, I've had various forms of facial hair. And probably over the last four or five years, I really started developing the big sideburns and all. But like a single chop alone or pants with one leg bare, Bill longed to find his other half with whom his life to share. And lo, the flowing strands of fate did answer good Bill's prayer. And so came Pat to join with Bill like twined and braided hair. Pat quickly loved the man, but not at first his fluffed wings, till Bill learned of odd battles where they crowned a barbate king. So off they went to distant lands where Bill entered the ring, and when Bill won, Pat grabbed his beard and said, I love this thing. She didn't used to like my facial hair, to the point of sometimes I think I will wake up in the morning and check and make sure I still had it. And as soon as we started doing the travel and everything. And the, from the first time I walked off the stage at Anchorage, Pat turned to me and she said, don't shave that off. We're going to go to Norway. You know, and ever, ever since then, she's had a good time. She'd made a lot of friends. Meanwhile, the holy Charlestown declared a jubilee, a day to honor facial hair by mayoral decree. The main event, a contest to select the attendee with most impressive whiskers, be it beard, stash, or goatee. Welcome to the third annual Southeastern Beard and Mustache Championships. <laughs> Cheers to the Holy City Beard and Mustache Society, where we sport beards of all variety. Musicians, artists, outdoorsmen, all free of strife have put down the razor for the bearded life. So Bill with Pat rode into town one sweltry summer's day, not to compete, instead to judge, so Bill could view and weigh which of the beards comprised the best follicular bouquet, and crown as winner, he who had the manliest display. Uh, some of them are, you know, they're really, really close on, on what the beards actually look like and everything. And it is hard to make distinctions. Sometimes that's where the personality shines through, too. You know, these guys have been growing beards for a long time, and they're really taking care of them good. Sometimes you really got to think real hard about it. The whiskers flocked from across the land to enter in the fight. A crowd 1,000 strong came, too, to see the awesome sight. Of seven score of beardos perched on stage in tufted flight, all wondering whose plumage would arouse the most delight. I think the judges should be looking for a big, thick, full, uh, well-rounded, as in color. Well, for me, the best full beard is length, girth, fullness. Well, I guess it depends if they're looking for something outrageous and fantastic. you gotta, you got to go for whoever's got the most fantastic. I don't know. Uh, that's one of the fun things about this event is that you don't know what you're going up against. But there's also the more natural, just a thick, full chop that's got to get its respect as well, I think. A lot of people trim. I don't like trimming. Something that just is going to turn heads on the street and people are going to say, damn, that's an epic beard. And though a competition, all were mainly there for fun. These rivals came for friendship, not simply to see who won. They laughed with one another as tall whisker tails they spun and knew they'd stay true friends long after this event was done. I, I'm just having fun. I'm not worried about competition. I'm just here to have fun and, uh, and enjoy the moment. I mean, it's a beard competition, so it should never be too serious. I like seeing other people do the exact same thing that I do. So whether if I, you know, whether if I win or lose, it's still fun, you know? You know, I look in the mirror and say, you know, it's just a beard. You know, uh, beards regenerate. They grow back. Winning's always fun. I mean, winning's good. You know, you like to win, but... Uh... You know, the whole thing, all this is, is getting together and meeting friends that, you know, you haven't seen for a few months and uh, having a good time. You don't get ultra worked up or pumped? Or oh, I don't, I, nah, I don't get worried about anything like that, you know. Sometimes my wife says I do, but I don't think so. <laughs> Yet still true fight it was, not merely puffing up in jest. Though all were friends, all two were foes, as each beard was assessed. All there that night sought victory for his proud and virile crest, and on his chosen battlefield to be revered as best. It's definitely a real competition. I mean, we've got people coming here from New York, uh, Texas. Uh, I'm told there's at least one person here from Alaska. That's pretty serious competitiveness. I think it's, it's all fun and games until you start standing in line before you call your name. And right to that last minute, you kind of re feel real competitive and you kind of get in that full game spirit. Your game face on, you're ready to go. Being friendly and all of that doesn't mean it's not a huge competition and that we're very competitive. I would love to care only a little or not at all in the secret deep dark 
part of my heart. I know I just want to compete and I want to win and I know it's important to me. I know if I don't place, it's going to hurt a little part of my heart, but I'm really, really trying to just let everything go and just have fun. Yeah, I drove uh, five hours to get here, so I'm absolutely here to win. There's no doubt in my mind, and I should win this competition. So Bill greeted the crowd, then turned all thought just to the job of picking out the best whiskers from this unshaven mob. But still the night grew hotter, and the heat set out to rob, all comfort from those present turning man to dripping blob. And yet the fight was joined as each contender took the stage. First came the salty dogs, their beards all gray and white with age. Their years have taught there's more to life than learning from a page. And that we must all step outside conformity's stern cage. And had Ron hadn't shaved in 40 years. And, you know, he and his band of brothers in Vietnam made a pact that they wouldn't shave um, for the rest of their lives. Beards and the guys who wear them do it for a reason. You know, it's not just some lark. I mean, it has meaning to them. And, and that's a history in a, in a society where everything's disposable and nothing lasts. Beards, beards last. Next came the Whiskerina Bells with beards crafted by art. These ladies cannot grow their own, but still yearned to take part. And doing so, they had a mighty lesson to impart. Testosterone may grow a beard, but not as much as heart. The need, I think, to include women on these things is paramount because they're married to guys with beards. They date guys with beards and mustaches. And for them to embrace it, you know, gives us more leeway and gives us more legitimacy. They're so much fun to hang around. They're just as competitive as the guys. Then came the college beards, so younger men could have their chance to show off youthful fuzz before new bosses looked askance. And goatees marched by two, each searching for that kindly glance, a sign from Bill of who would to the final round advance. The Donegal, or Whaler beard, was next before the crowd, as worn by Amish men who have the mustache disavowed. It's seen as a uh, warlike. The Amish are pacifist, and the uh, armed forces and different historical forces in their past if worn mustaches. And then the sideburns had their turn to show how they're endowed. But though their hair was his, Bill stayed impartial as he'd vowed. Don't even look at the faces when I was judging, basically was looking at the beards. Probably 90% of the people that I, I know competed against a, a large number of them and it makes no difference. Once once you've done anything in, in bearding, then you know, you, you know quite a bit of these guys. The next onto the stage were styled in natural mustache. Though shorn of chin hair, these men still do make a mighty splash. If beards are complete vestments, then lip hair's a manly sash. And sometimes he who dresses down displays the most panache. Yet still the heat was growing worse, all skin coated in sweat, which even for the hardiest can pose a parched threat. Pat felt her head grow light and was by dizziness beset, but still Bill judged quite unaware of the arising threat. So groomed beards men came next with whiskers full but also neat. You need a steady trimming hand in this class to compete. Just one uneven patch will lead to shamefaced defeat. But honing every detail makes a win even more sweet. Where longer beards began to push the boundaries of conformity, a groomed beard, it's a well-maintained beard that looks, for lack of a better word, presentable. And now up on the stage gathered a most peculiar group. The freestyle men with hair arrayed and hoop and swoop and loop. All well gelled against gravity to make sure they don't droop. Like any work of art, mere words cannot describe this troop. But it is a creative category and it's a fun category and it's an outlandish category. People see beards and they, you know, oh gosh, that's a big beard. But, you know, if you have a reindeer in your beard, people are like, how did you do that? People are much more, almost more comfortable with a freestyle beard than they are with a, an actual beard. You must have taken time to do this, <laughs> especially if you're wearing a suit with it. You know, you're trying to look nice. Then beards not longer than one foot were on the stage amassed. The largest class by far, a tightly packed and motley cast. And each one glad to be there, from the first man to the last. Each smiling, laughing, dancing, simply having quite a blast.
And lastly, Fullbeard Natural were called to be appraised. I think Fullbeard Natural is, you know, are seen as the, the big champions, seems to be like the big dog of the night. A daunting judging task, though Bill remained wholly unfazed. Actually, probably one of the hardest ones to judge is the uh, over 12 inches, the really long guys. They put a lot of work in it. You know, it's a lot of time growing it, a lot of time, a lot more time than people think taking care of it. And uh, so, you know, you, you got to take a good look at it and everything. He sized up all these regal men, each of whom should be praised. For beards so long and flowing, they leave one and all amazed. And so each of the classes had a victor duly named. But towards the biggest question of the night, all thoughts soon aimed. Of these class winners who would now be publicly proclaimed the overall grand winner and so be forever famed. But then a panicked beardsman from the crowd began to yell that where once Pat had stood now to the ground she'd senseless fell. The moment that Bill heard beards were forgotten worries swell, for Bill's one care was to make sure his treasured Pat was well. And so Bill fled the contest stage to kneel down by his bride. He promised from that moment on he'd stay right at her side. But when Bill rose to join his wife for her ambulance ride, she grabbed his hand held tight and lovingly began to chide. She said, I'll go alone, for we both know you're needed here. We all have our odd passions. Beards are one that you hold dear. And not just you, but all these folks need you to persevere. You took an oath to judge, and to that oath you must adhere. I will support and defend, I will support and defend the, mustaches and beards the mustaches and beards of the United States, of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. And when Bill still looked torn, Pat just worked harder to persuade. I simply got too hot, I should have rested in the shade. So put aside your worries, for my health be not afraid. But your health, dear spouse, is at risk when I am disobeyed. So Bill stayed back and did his job of choosing the best beard. All thanks to Pat, who steered him straight when off his path he veered. Too soon the night was over, and as time to depart neared, both Bill and winners bade farewell as the audience cheered. Perhaps the humdrum herd will say that Pat had gone insane, when off she went for treatment while she bade Bill to remain. But that's what partners do, help one another to obtain that which the other needs, whether outlandish or mundane. Pat knew this beard event was to Bill more than just a show. It was part of his life he loved that he'd never outgrow. And letting him stay was a gift she'd happily bestow, to later have a chance to bask in Bill's post-contest glow. A beard is more than just some hair that dangles from the chin. It proclaims to the world just who you are and where you've been. Pat never stood on stage, yet she left Charleston with a win. Though Pat's chin may be bare, that night she proved her beard within. Bye.
about the best there are. Every beard is is um, important and true to the person who wears it in, in its own way.